Chapters 7 through 12 of the Second Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Second Book of Samuel, Chapters 7 through 12. Chapter 7 but when the king dwelt in his palace and the ever-living had given him peace all round from his enemies then the king said to nathan the prophet see i now rest in a palace of cedar but the ark of god remains under curtains when nathan answered the king all that is in your heart do it for the ever-living is with you but in that night the message of the ever-living came to nathan saying go and speak to my servant david to say thus says the ever-living will you build me a house to dwell in when i have not rested in a house from the days i brought israel up out of the mitzraim to this day but have marched with a pavilion and tabernacle in which i have travelled with the forces of the children of israel have i spoken to the one tribe of israel whom i commanded to shepherd my people israel to ask why have you not built me a palace of cedar consequently now say this to my servant david thus says the ever-living power i took you from following after the sheep to become a leader over my people israel and i have been with you wherever you went and have defeated your enemies before you and made your name great like the name of those famous on the earth i have also provided a position for my people israel and planted them and they shall rest in it and never fear nor shall the sons of evil again afflict as formerly but from the day when i dictated a constitution to my people israel and gave you rest from all your enemies did the ever-living inquire what house will you make for the lord your days however shall be completed and you shall sleep with your fathers but i will raise an heir after you who shall come from your loins and i will fix him in your kingship he shall build a house to my name and i will establish the throne of his kingship for ever i shall be his father and he will be my son he will be a guide to the wandering and i will cause him to correct men with a staff and the sons of adam with a touch and i will never turn my friendship from him as i turned it from saul when i caused it to turn from him to you for your house and your kingship shall endure for ever your throne shall be established for ever all these words and all this vision nathan related to david king david consequently went and sat before the ever-living and said who am i lord my prince and who was my father that you have brought me so far but even this is little in your sight supreme lord for you have promised also to extend the house of your servant and to show this to a man supreme lord so why again should david speak to you further since you know your servant supreme lord for according to your promise in your heart you have given all this greatness to glorify your servant therefore i magnify you ever-living god for there is none like you and there is no god except you from all that we hear with our ears and who are like your people israel a singular nation in the earth to whom a god comes to instruct it as a people and to fix a fame upon it and to effect for it the mighty works and wonders in your land in the presence of your people whom you redeemed from the heathen of mitzraim and their gods and established the people of israel for yourself as a people forever and you are become their ever-living god and also ever-living god the promise you have promised to your servant and to his house to fix it forever do what you have promised and he will magnify your name forever proclaiming the ever-living god of hosts the god over israel so let the house of your servant david ever-living be established before you for you ever-living power the god of israel have opened the ear to your servant when he said i will build you a house therefore let your servant find the heart to pray this prayer to you for you ever-living lord are the god and your promises will become true and also this good promise to your servant therefore you have begun to bless the family of your servant that it may exist for ever before you for you ever-living lord have promised and with your blessing have blessed the family of your servant for ever chapter eight it was after this that david attacked the philistim and subdued them when david took their metropolis from the philistim 
he also attacked moab and appointed a land tax upon their farms and imposed two taxations one instead of inflicting death and a tax for tribute whilst they lived thus the moabites became david's subjects and paid tribute David next defeated Hadadezer ben Rechab, king of Zobah, on his march to recover his power upon the river Euphrates, when David captured 1,700 of their chariots and 20,000 footmen. But David destroyed all the chariot horses and only preserved a hundred chariots. The Aramai of Damask, however, came to assist Hadadezer, king of the Delta, but David defeated 22,000 men of them in Aram. David afterward placed garrisons in Aram of Damask, and Aram became subject to David and bore tribute, for the ever-living worked for David wherever he went. Consequently David took the shields of gold which the officers of Hadadezer carried, and brought them to Jerusalem. King David also took from Betok and Berothai, cities of Hadadezer, a very great quantity of brass. When Tai, the king of Kamath, heard that David had defeated all the forces of Hadadezer, Tai sent his son Joram to King David to ask for peace upon him, and to congratulate him upon the way he had fought Hadadezer and defeated him, for Tai had been a general of Hadadezer, and he brought with him articles of silver and gold and brass. These also King David brought to the ever-living, with the silver and gold which he took from all the nations whom he subdued, from Aram, and from Moab, and from the Benai Ammon, and from the Philistim, and from Amalek, and from the booty of Hadadezer ben Rechab, king of the delta of Zobah. David also acquired fame on his turning the flank upon defeating the eighteen thousand of Aram at the river's mouth by the sea. He placed garrisons in the whole of Edom, and all Edom was subdued to David. Thus the ever-living protected David wherever he went, for David reigned over all Israel, and David administered justice and right to all his people. Joab ben Zeruiah was over his army, and Jehoshaphat ben Achilud was chancellor, and Zadok ben Achitub, and Ahimelech ben Abiathar priests, and Sariah secretary, and Benaiah ben Jehoiada commanded the guards and light infantry, and the sons of David became priests. Chapter 9 Then David inquired, Who is there yet of the family of Saul remaining, and I will show him kindness on account of Jonathan? And Saul had in his family a servant whose name was Ziba, so they invited him to David, when the king asked him, Are you Ziba? And he replied, Your servant. Then the king asked him, Is there yet remaining any one of the family of Saul, and I will show him kindness for God's sake? And Ziba replied to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan, lame in his feet. When the king asked him, Where is he? Ziba said, He is in the house of Machri ben Amial, the tax collector. King David therefore sent and took him from the house of Machri ben Amial, the tax collector, and he brought Mephibosheth ben Jonathan, the son of Saul, to David, and he inclined his face and bowed to him. Then David said, Mephibosheth, and he replied, you see your servant and david said to him fear nothing for i will show you kindness on account of your father jonathan and i will assign to you all the estate of saul your ancestor and you shall eat bread always at my table but he bowed to him and replied why should you regard such a dead dog's head as i am then the king called to ziba the attendant of saul and said to him all that belonged to saul and to all his family i have given to the son of your prince so you and your sons can attend to the property for him, and cultivate the estate for him, and provide the son of your prince with a maintenance. But Mephibosheth, the son of your prince, shall always be supplied with food at my table, and for Ziba there shall be fifteen attendants and ten servants. And Ziba replied to the king, Your servant will do all exactly as my lord the king has ordered to his servant, and I will maintain Mephibosheth at my table like one of the sons of the king. Mephibosheth also had a young son, whose name was Micah, who always lived in the house of Ziba, the steward of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, however, resided in Jerusalem, for he was always at the table of the king, and he was lame in both his feet. Chapter 10 It was after these events that the king of the Benai Ammon died, and Canaan his son reigned in his stead. So David said, I will show friendship to Canaan ben Nakash as I did to his father. Therefore officers of David went to the country of the Benai Ammon, 
but the chiefs of the Benai Amon said to Canaan their prince, Does David pay honor to your father in your sight by sending comforters to you? Is it not for the purpose of examining the city and to survey it and to explore it that David has sent his officers to you? Canaan consequently took David's officers and shaved off half their beards and cut off their clothing to the buttocks and dismissed them. But strangers reported to David, so he sent to meet them, for his officers had been grossly insulted, and the king said, Stay in Jericho until your beards are grown, then return. The Benai Amon, however, were terrified after they had insulted David. Consequently the Benai Amon sent and hired of the Aramai of Beth Rehob and of the Aramai of Zobah twenty thousand infantry, and the king of Makkah with a thousand men, and of the people of Tob twelve thousand men. David, however, heard of it, and sent Joab with a strong division of the guards. But the Benai Amon came out and arranged for battle opposite the gate, and Aram Zobah and Rechob and the men of Tob and Makkah were separate in the open country. Joab consequently saw that there was upon him a battle in front and rear, so he chose all the guards of Israel and arranged to meet the Aramai, and the remainder of the force he gave to Abishai his brother, and arranged them to meet the Benai Amon, and said, If the Aramai are too strong for me, you must save me, and if the Benai Amon are too strong for you, then I will march to help you. Courage, and be bold for the honor of our people and the honor of the city of our God, and may the ever-living do what is good in his sight. Then Joab and the force with him advanced to the fight with Aramai, and they fled before him. When the Benai Amon saw that the Aramai fled, then they fled before Abishai and went into the city. Joab, however, refrained from pursuing the Benai Amon and returned to Jerusalem. But when the Aramai saw that they were defeated by Israel, they assembled together and sent to Hadadezer, and he sent to the Aramai beyond the river and procured their forces, and Shobak, general of the army of Hadadezer, to lead them. But it was reported to David, who collected the forces of Israel and passed over the Jordan and went to Kailam, where Aram drew out to meet David, and they fought with him. But Aram fled before Israel, and David destroyed of the Aramites seven hundred chariots and four thousand horsemen, and defeated and killed Shobak, the general of the army there. When all the kings who were subject to Hadadezer saw that they were defeated before Israel, they made peace with Israel and were subject, and Aram feared to help the Benai Amon further. Chapter 11 But when the turn of the year came, the season when generals go out to war, David sent Joab and his officers with him and the forces of Israel, and reduced the Benai Amon to great distress. David, however, remained in Jerusalem. One night David arose from his bed, and walked on the veranda of his house, and saw a woman bathing herself on a roof, and a very beautiful woman she was. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and was told, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers, and took her, and went to her, and lay with her, and prostituting, he defiled her, and then sent her home. But the woman conceived, so she sent and informed David, and said, I am with child. David therefore sent to Joab, to say, Send Uriah the Hittite to me. Joab accordingly sent Uriah to David, and Uriah came to him, when David asked, Is Joab well, and the army well? and the war going successfully? Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah accordingly left the palace of the king, but went after the business of the king. Afterwards Uriah lay down in the court of the king's palace with all the officers of his prince, and did not go to his own house. But David was informed, Uriah has not gone to his house. David consequently asked Uriah, how is it when you have come from a journey that you have not gone to your house? When Uriah answered David, The ark and Israel and Judah remain in tents with my commander Joab, and the officers of my prince lie on the surface of the field. So should I go to my house to eat and drink and sleep with my wife? By your life and by the life of your soul I would not do such a thing as that. Then David said to Uriah, Stay here today, and tomorrow I will send you off. Uriah, therefore, remained in Jerusalem that day and the next, and David invited him, and he ate in his presence, and he gave him drink, and made him drunk. Yet he went at night and lay down in his bed, with other officers of his prince, and did not go down to his home. 
Consequently, when morning came, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah, and wrote in the letter commanding, Station Uriah tomorrow in the front of the battle, at the most dangerous place. Then you withdraw from his rear, and let him be assailed and killed. Joab was then besieging the city, so he posted Uriah at the spot where he knew there were brave men. And those men sallied out of the city and attacked Joab, who fell back with the troops of the officers of David, and Uriah the Hittite was killed. Then Joab sent and informed David of all the events of the battle, and instructed the messenger, saying, Tell the whole of the events of the battle to the king. But if it happens that it raises anger in the king, and he says to you, Why did you approach the city to fight? Did you not know they would see you from the wall? Who hit Abimelech ben Jerubal? Was it not a woman who flung upon him a piece of a millstone from off the wall and killed him? Then you must say, Also your officer Uriah the Hittite has been killed. So the messenger went and came and reported to David all that Joab sent him for. The messenger also said to David, the man overpowered us, and came out to us in the open field when we advanced opposite the gate. And the sentinels picked out your officers from off the wall, and killed some of the officers of the king. And your general, Uriah the Hittite, also was killed. Then David said to the messenger, Say this to Joab, Let not this event be grievous in your eyes, for the sword devours here and there. Be energetic in your assault upon the city, and breach it, and master it. When the wife of Uriah heard he was dead, she mourned over her lord and refused to eat. David, however, sent and added her to his family, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done was wrong in the sight of the ever-living. Chapter 12 The ever-living consequently sent Nathan the preacher to David, and he came to him, and said, There were two men in a certain city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very great flocks and herds, but the poor had nothing except a little single she-lamb which he had bought, and he comforted it, and it grew up with him and his children, and ate of his crumbs, and drank of his cup, and lay on his lap, and was like a daughter to him. But a traveller came to the rich man, who grudged to take from his own flocks and herds to prepare, and offer to his visitor, but seized the she-lamb of the poor man, and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David was very furious at the man, and exclaimed to Nathan, By the life of the ever-living, the man who has done that shall die, and for the she-lamb he shall pay four as a fine, whoever has done this thing, and he shall have no pity. But Nathan replied to David, You are the man. Thus says the ever-living God of Israel, I consecrated you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul, and I gave you the palace of your prince, and the wives of your prince to your bosom, and I gave you the houses of Israel and Judah, and I added portions to you from here and from there. So why have you despised the commandment of the ever-living by committing this sin in his sight? You have cut off Uriah the Hittite by the sword, and have taken his wife to yourself as a wife, and have murdered him by the sword of the Benai Ammon. So now the sword shall not depart from your house forever, as a punishment, for you despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be a wife for yourself. Thus says the ever-living, I will raise against you outrage from your own family, and I will cause your wives to be taken in your sight and given to your neighbor, and he shall ravish your wives in the sight of this son, for you have done it secretly, but I will effect this event in the presence of all Israel, and in the face of the sun. Then David exclaimed to Nathan, I have sinned against the ever-living. When Nathan replied, The ever-living also will pardon your offense. You shall not die. However, since you have given occasion for the enemies of the ever-living to libel by this thing, the son that will be born to you will certainly die. Nathan then went to his home. The ever-living subsequently struck the child which the wife of Uriah had borne to David, and it was mortal. David, however, entreated God on account of the child, and mourned and slept on the ground until the officers of his palace came to him and took him up from the earth. But he would not be comforted and would not eat bread with them. At the end of seven days, however, the child died. But David's officers feared to tell him that the child was dead, for, they said, 
when the child was alive and we spoke he would not listen to our voice therefore if we should say the child is dead he will do worse david however perceived that his ministers were whispering and david understood that the child was dead so david asked his ministers has the child died and they replied uh, he has died then david arose from the ground and washed and dressed and changed his clothing and went to the house of the ever-living and worshipped then he went to his palace and asked for and they offered him food and he ate but his ministers asked him what a thing this is that you did on account of the child you mourned and wept for him when alive but now the child has died you get up and eat bread when david replied whilst the child was alive i mourned and wept for i reflected who knows but the ever-living will pity me and let the child live but now he has died why should i grieve am i ever able to bring him back to me i shall go to him but he will not return to me david also comforted bathsheba his wife and went to her and slept with her and she bore a son and called his name solomon and the ever-living loved him and sent by the means of nathan the reciter and called his name jadadiah pardoned by the ever-living joab however was warring with the benai amon at rabbah and he captured the royal city so joab sent messengers to david to say i am fighting at rabbah and have captured the city of waters so now collect the remainder of the forces and come to the citadel to capture it or i shall capture the citadel and they will fix my name upon it david consequently collected the forces and went to rabbah and attacked and captured it and took the crown from off the head of its king its value was a talent of gold and the beautiful stone on the top was david's and they brought out from the town a very great quantity of booty he also brought out the people and settled them in megra and at the ironworks and to manufacture iron and distributed them through his dominions and did the same to all the cities of the benai amon after which david returned with all the forces to jerusalem the end of chapters seven through twelve of the second book of samuel recording by mark penfold